So, when I got the message, what we were speaking on, purity of heart and focusing on the Lord, I kept hearing purity of heart, purity of heart towards God. And that just where he narrowed down my focus isn't how necessarily, he, did, he kept my focus off how I'm going to act towards one another, but how I act towards God. And in that, that affects and trickles down to everything else. And that's simple because that's just the life of Christ. If we read the life of Christ, right, read the gospel, well, actually, everything points to Christ. He's the fulfillment. But reading the life of Christ in the gospels, reading what he did, how he walked, his perception of things, how he spoke, how he, how he kept his moral line with the world, right, he wasn't so much, he, he didn't come down on the world. He came down on those who were world, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, right? Because there was a form of godliness, but they, they more enjoyed the praise of men, not the praise of God, right? And so that's what, I mean, he, we'll read here in a second. Um, I started reading this stuff, and my gosh, it just comes alive. And I just, I almost just brought the tears this morning. I'm rereading, going over the script, and I'm like, over what was seen silly. And I'm like, why am I getting so emotional over this? And it's just the way he's ministering, the way he speaks. Is, it's, it's, it's a living word. And reading about the life of Christ and how our heart, we hold our heart towards him. He should be the keeper of our hearts. It's the most precious. It's, it's what the Bible says that our hearts are desperately wicked. Who can know that? Right? And if I look back as I'm a child, when I was a child, you know, I made these declarations, I will never do that. I'll never do this and I'll never do that. Yet, if I look back in my life as I've grown, I've seen and I can reflect on things that, you know what, I never thought that I would do that. But I did that. When I was young, I did that, but I swore I never would. Right? So I make declarations to myself, but yet, if I try to hold on to my heart and, what's, and be the controller of what, I, I just, I'm not. Like Daniel said, it's just, it's, we're not perfect. So we put it in his hands. Because that's a good place, right? Just, there's no rock, no, no, no rust, no moth. There's nothing to chew it up. It's in good hands. And, you know, when I was reading this, I, I had this little side thought. You ever watch that show, Undercover Boss? And so I'm sitting here reading about Jesus, and here he is walking with the disciples. You know, he's the boss. And here he is, kind of undercover. For those that don't know, you know obviously, and, and he's just walking with people that are supposed to be representing him, or he's engaging with those that are supposed to be representing him, and yet he's kind of undercover. They don't know really. They, want, they don't want to deny who he is. And it's funny, because as we read, um, the ones that recognized who he was weren't necessarily the, the most educated. They didn't go through all the scholarly courses but they knew exactly who he was. <laughs> and so I said, the first question was, who or what has your heart? And we go to Mark 10, 17 through 22, we, we look at the rich, run, uh, rich young ruler. And so he came running to Jesus, says, what should I do? Rabbi, teacher, what do I need to do to have eternal life? And Jesus says, well, you know, you, you know the commandments. You know the commandments. That was not steal, fornicate. He just listed them off. And what did he say? He says, I did all these things since my youth. Then Jesus looking at I love the way it's written in Mark because I'm reading from the New King James. He says, Jesus looking at him loved him. He loved him. But he saw that he still had an issue. There was an idol in his life. But he looked at him and he, and he loved him. So he looked on him with love. And plus, being Jesus, he knew that what he was going to say was going to cause this young man to turn and walk away. But yet he looked on him with love. And he said, one thing you lack. Go your way, sell whatever you have, and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And come, take up the cross and follow me. But he was sad at this word and went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. What had his heart? See, sometimes we think that if we have a lot of stuff, we have a lot of finance, and that's not a bad thing. 
if you have it and it doesn't have you. Does that make sense? Because we got Moses, we have Abraham, we have, uh, we have men in the scripture that are wealthy. Job, I mean, they're wealthy, but they have it. They have control of it. They use it for a blessing. They use it to further the cause. They, they see the needs and they help, right? They don't withhold. And so that's okay because they have control of it. But sometimes we think, well, if I had this, then I could bless others. If I had, if I won the lottery, I, I could pay off someone's house. I could do all this wonderful. And so we sell ourselves on the things that we think that we would do. And yet I wonder why I still don't have all that stuff. And sometimes I sit and think and I go, God, you know my heart. You know what I still need to mature in beyond what I do. So I'm assuming that maybe I just don't have it because I'm not listening. I haven't really submitted. There's some parts in me that aren't ready for that. It would grab hold of me. And thank you, God, that you're not letting these things from the world come in and lay a hook in me where I think I can control it, but you know best. It's not saying that I won't have those things in life, but it'll be a time of maturity when they come so that they can be used as a blessing, right, but not as a stronghold. Now, note this. There's a side note that he says this to the rich man. He said, sell everything you have. Give it to the poor so that you'll have treasure in heaven. So there's a reference here really, really plainly that there's earthly giving. There's with material things. We use them, right? We store up treasure in heaven, right? So it's with the right heart when you give, whether you give here, whether you give on the street, whether you're handing out blankets, Whatever it is you're doing, if you have excess to give and you give with that heart, you're storing up treasure in heaven, right? So with one, you gain the other. So just think about that when you're debating of whether or not you should let that thing go for the blessing or hang on to it because it's tied to something spiritually. Jesus said, I lay down my life that I may take it again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down. So whether who delivered Jesus, who, who killed Jesus, it's all, it doesn't matter. He laid it down. It's in that that we have our same choice. We have the decision to lay down our lives. We, he left the decision for us to open up our hearts to him. And in doing that, laying down our life, dying to ourselves. See, it's in the same permission. See, the same thing was done with... with uh, but even when he went to sacrifice his son, and that was withheld, on that same mount, that same place, that's where Jesus was crucified. So as was one, so was the other. As Jesus made the decision to lay down his life, and so he knocks on the door of our hearts so we can lay down our lives. Right? So there's a cleansing that happens in this. John twelve forty two. Nevertheless, even among the rulers... Many believed in him, but because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him that they should be, so that they would be uh, put out of the synagogue. For they loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. They loved what Jesus said. They believed in who he was. Guys, this is really important because Danielle touched on this. In Romans 10, 9 through 10, it's a confession with the mount. How many times I've had to ask for forgiveness in places where we've been in our maturity and our walk with Christ and as we're willing to keep walk with him, that there's a place where there's a time that's going to happen where we're going to have to open with our mouth and confess who it is that we believe in, right? And there may not be people around that you really, you're ready for that confrontation, but God keeps prodding you. You keep saying, now's the time, let it out. See, by, by your eyes, you think that this is going to turn out bad for me. But he's not looking at your circumstance because he sees your circumstances. He says, i got control over that. Don't worry about it. I need you not to worry about the things in this world because this isn't your home. I need you to start thinking about the things of the kingdom. And so now's the time to speak, and I'm prompting you to speak now, but yet we withhold it because we think that it's going to have a bad outcome for us. And on the worldly sense, maybe it does, but who cares because the world's going to go. This is not our world. This isn't our place. We're supposed to be a light. And there are times where we're tactful. And he says, not now, but later. And then we speak later when he prompts us 
right? It's all in his timing. And so he, then he turns around and, he, and, and you got to confess sometimes. But like these, they're like, man, if I confess, they're booting me. I'm out of here. And I really like this place. I really like what they, they, the perks are great. The benefits are fantastic. And so you start weighing the cost, the worldly cost versus the heavenly cost. What costs more? And so in doing that, there, see, there's a praise that comes. They love the praise of men more than the praise of God. We receive praise from God. He speaks, we move. I heard from him, so I speak, right? He said, he said, say this, and so we say it. He said, do this, so we do it, right? And we do it all in love, everything in love. Because it's in love that they see him. Because everything he did was in love. See, that's how we're separate from everybody else. It's because we love well. We love the same way that he loved us. See, it's in doing this, he's cleansing our heart as we begin to keep walking with him. It's that tunnel vision focus on who he is. John 1, I'm going I'm to read. I'm going to read it for a bit here because this is really good. And I wanted to share with you what I was feeling this morning because we're talking about purity of heart. And for me, it was purity of heart towards, <laughs> towards God. And so I found this because when we, there's, you can look at the life of Christ, but then you say, okay, well, that's Jesus. Adam, that's Jesus. Of course he walked, he, it's, he's God. It was easy for him to walk straight and make all the right decisions. So are there any examples of men? Well, how about his disciples? Remember, it's about, sometimes it's about the motivation. Why is it that you want to, you look at people crowded around Jesus all the time. Everybody had a motive. Want to hear what you have to say. People are looking at him to just be the king. Didn't even think about salvation. He was the next king. He was going to take, kick the Romans out, right? So their, their perspective was off. But what about the disciples? So in John 1, 35 through 51, I'm going to read this. Again, the next day, John stood with two of his disciples, and looking at Jesus as he walked, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God. The day before, John baptized Jesus. And so he sees him again and said, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. It wasn't even a question. That's where we're going. Then Jesus turned, and seeing them following, said to them, What do you seek? And they said to him, Rabbi, the teacher, where are you staying? And he said to them, Come and see. And they came and saw where he was staying, and remained with him that day. One of the two heard John speak and followed him. He was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. This is when they start, they start telling everybody they know. They start telling their family members because they've been looking. He first found his own brother Simon and said to him, we found the Messiah, which is translated the Christ, and he brought him to Jesus. Now when Jesus looked at him, he said, you are Simon, the son of Jonah. You shall be called Cephas, which is translated as stone. The following day, Jesus wanted to go to Galilee, and he found Philip and said to Philip, follow me. Now, Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we found him of whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Just put a tack in that. These guys were reading the scrolls. They, they wrote their scrolls, right? So they read Moses. And the prophets, these are the same scrolls, the same things that they're reading that the Pharisees and Sadducees are reading, right? But why is it these non-educated individuals, as far as educated like the Pharisees goes, are able to recognize who Jesus is based on Old Testament scripture? But yet the Pharisees and Sadducees can't see it. Why? It's a purity in the heart. It's a work in the heart. And the answer, we just talked about earlier, for they love the praise of men. They love the praise of men. Because before Jesus came on the scene, there was 400 years of silence, guys. 400 years between the New Testament and the Old Testament where God didn't speak. So there was prophets and there were people that were false. They kind of took the positions and saying because to preach the gospel and there's control in that. And so they got people in these positions now. All it is is about money. 
all it is about the numbers. Make yourself known to all the people. Say all the right words, right? They like that. And these guys have the scripture, and they're so focused on waiting for Jesus. And he comes on the scene, and they recognize him. They recognize him for who he is. They had a heart condition that was right. It was set for God. They were ready to receive him. And Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? And Philip said to him, come and see. So Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said to him, behold, an Israelite indeed in whom there is no deceit. And Nathanael said to him, how do you know me? And Jesus answered and said to him, before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. And Nathanael answered and said to him, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You're the king of Israel. And Jesus answered them, said to him, because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? This is simple, pure motivation of just, I want to know Jesus because he's Jesus. Because he's amazing, because I know who he is, I know who I'm looking for. Where so many others are looking to get around Jesus to see what they can get from him. He wanted to heal people. And it was a good thing to bring the sick and the lame and everybody to Jesus. But so many people got healed and got touched and then they left. It was, and he, he's okay, he wants to heal. That's who he is, he loves. And he wants to see his children set right. But there's a motive, there's a change of heart that happens here when you're, your motive is to know Jesus for the sake of knowing Jesus because he's amazing, because he is the light of the world. <laughs> Jesus cleanses the temple. It is, I, I laughed and I cried a little bit in this one, which is kind of silly when I was reading it, why I was getting emotional. But now the Passover of the Jews was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem, and he found in the temple those who sold oxen and sheep and doves and the money changers doing business. When he had made a whip of cords, he saw what, he was, what was happening. He found the material he needed. I'm taking, I'm imagining him. He sits down, and he starts weaving together his whip as he's looking what's going on and he's just weaving them together who's getting it first <laughs> someone's getting it first and he's making this what he just made he didn't go and just get a switch he, he he made it man he's just watching i thought that was funny i find humor in that um and then he drove them out of the temple the sheep and the oxen he poured out the the changers of money and overturned their tables and he said that the, uh, those who sold doves did not make my father's house a house of merchandise or a den of thieves right what was happening is that people would get their offering and they had to be unspotted if you remember you bring your offering it's unspotted it's pure and so they would bring their but then they would be inspected and someone would always find a blemish but i got you covered brother because right here we got some unblemished doves we got some sheep over here that don't have a spot on them and for the simple price of 5.99 we can get you a pure unspotted sheep for your offering, and we'll just take that other one off your hands. Right? Do you see? That's what's happening. It was, it was corrupt, and he wasn't having it in the temple. And so he drove him out. Then his disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house has eaten me up. And this is where he spoke to me, and I kind of broke down because he doesn't live in that temple anymore. He lives in here now. And it's with that same zeal that he wants to clean out my house, right? He doesn't want anything in this place, in this world, to have a hold on me. And the same with you. He has a zeal for you so that he helps with that purity of heart to cleanse it so the motives appear, so our motives become his motives, right? We line up. We begin to co-labor with Christ. Instead of trying to get him to labor with us, it just doesn't work that way. He's got other plans, and he's hard to change. I can't. I've tried, and his mindset on something you can't change it. You argue all you want; it just doesn't work. He has a, a plan, and he has a zeal for you and your heart, and he will clean house just as aggressively as he did in that temple, because it is his father's house now, right? He knocked on the door of your heart and he was knocking and you accepted 
and you opened up the door and said, Lord, come in to my heart and make it clean. And, and I, Lord, I just, I want to be with you and I want to, I want to go to heaven. However it was that that transaction took place, he came in and resided with you. He took up space. And then he doesn't look around the condemnation, though. And here, he was cleaning some, some wickedness out. Now he does. He cleans the dirt. And he sweeps. He lifts up the rugs. He sweeps. He cleans it out. But that's a work that he does that we can't do on our own. I can't sanctify myself. I can't make myself clean. That's his work that he did. That's his labor. And he comes in, and he, with a zeal and a love for who you are, he cleans house because his father is now taking up residence. All of them. That's why we can boldly go into the throne room of grace and speak to our Father. Always available. Always there. Always when we take that one step and say, Lord, I'm sorry. I just, I want to get back into the center of your will. You know, forgive. And there you are. You're right back there. That quick. And then you turn around and he walks you out. He walks you out. You lay down the stuff. He brings it up, Lord, just bring up those things in my life, Lord, that are just, I, 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 I keep holding on to. Just bring it to mind so I can lay them down at your feet. It's a simple process. It's just simple words. It's a pure motive in the heart. Help bring that up, Lord. I want to lay it down. There's things, Lord, I haven't been thinking about. Lord, if there's things, oh, yeah, that. I'm sorry, God. I need to go. I need to ask for forgiveness. And then pretty soon you're, He's reconciling relationships because you're giving them place to hear them. There's something else that you need to lay down. Oh, thank you, Lord. No, I am sorry, and I here take that from me. I don't need that in my life anymore. Thank you that you're there. And then just cleansing. It's one step at a time. As much as you want to give him, he takes it. He takes it, and he helps in that process in cleaning the heart because now you've given it. You've given it to him. the stuff ahead of my notes. <laughs> it's hard sometimes to walk in this world and sometimes you walk the fence and you think that you're here and then you jump over here and you're kind of back and forth sometimes. And know that any moment at any time, all you, you just stop. And during this process of, between Danielle and myself speaking, if the God has been bringing things up and my, up to your mind, up to the forefront of your head, saying, yeah, let's, let's lay this down. Let's lay it down. We're going to lay it down together. You, you, we're we're going to walk out. The impure heart, it's not, it's not a work that you do on your own. The part that you do is when he says this, you say, okay, and then you do. Okay, Lord, I will. You see, we can hear all the good things from about God and all the good things that he has for us, but there's an important part that we play in this transaction, and that's the part where we put action to the words. You call me Lord, Lord, but you don't do what I say. If you love me, you'll do the things that I say, Jesus says. And so he had asked Peter, do you love me? Lord, you know, feed my sheep. Do you love me? Do you love me? How many times? He'll ask me three times, do you love me? Right? Do you love me? Are you willing to follow me? Or really, really follow me? Do you trust that I have good plans for you? Do you trust that I have a zeal for your life? Do you trust that I know that you have kids? Do you trust that you can put them in, in, into my care? Do you, do you trust that I know the intimate things of your life? And that I'm not asking, you know, we, some, we think that God doesn't know but he knows. And so what are we really giving up? We're giving up control. We're asking for him to guide us. Can you pray with me for a minute? 
Lord, this is a beautiful, beautiful topic. This is the, what you've been bringing up. The purity of heart, Lord. Letting go of the cares of the world. The silly things, Lord, that have grabbed us. You know, we, 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 we say things like, this is my show, and I, you know, we binge watch this, and all these things that kind of just in and hook, and Lord, that, that in and of themselves, Lord, they don't necessarily, or they're not bad, all in all. But Lord, help us not to be like the rich young ruler where we hold on to things of this world so much that we walk away from the call that you have on us. Sad. Lord, he walked away sad. Because he knew who you were, and at the same time, he was unwilling to give up everything he had. He valued his riches, Lord, more than a relationship with you. Well, Lord, and you asked him to come and follow you, to sell it all. That was the thing. Lord, it wasn't what he had. It was what had hold of him. Lord, as it was an idol in his life. Lord, anything that's in our lives that, Lord, you bring into mind, help us to lay it down right now. We just put it at your feet. Lord, if it's money and the pursuit of it, Lord, we don't need to pursue it. We just need to follow you. It's passion, Lord. Our passion for you, just help it rise up, Lord. Help that passion to rise up, Lord. There was times that you say, remember your first love. Lord, it's that during that moment, that first love moment, we're so willing to compromise anything. Anything, Lord. We just want to spend time with you. You're amazing. We have the amazing. Just bring it back up, Lord. Breathe on that fire again. Because you're saying we're supposed to be salt and light. And we all have a measure of that saltiness, Lord. And you say that we're supposed to, just to, to embrace that. You've made us to be flavorful. And it's you that brings us that flavor, Lord. You make it. You're the light that shines in us. Lord, help us just to tear off the roof of that and let your light shine, Lord, so we can be that blessing to the world because they so desperately need you. And, Lord, you're able to make all grace abound towards us. We don't have to chase it. We don't have to chase any one thing in this world because all these things, Lord, you're able to just flow right towards us. You don't have a problem with us having things. Lord, Solomon and David had things. They had everything but they had a heart towards you. And so you showered them. You blessed them with earthly things, and you blessed them, Lord, with an amazing relationship. Lord, you have, you are, you are so beautiful and so perfect. Lord, help us to get our priorities right. And give us the boldness to speak, Lord, when it's time to speak and to do when it's time to do. Help us to move when it's time to move. To be kind. To show love to the world around us, Lord. Because it needs you. And Lord, you choose to work through us. You choose to work through us. And thank you, Lord, that you choose to want. You want. You want to have a relationship with us. Yeah, the king of the universe. Stepped out of heaven to come and spend time with us to die for us, to raise up again for us, to join that relationship back together, Lord. And you say that you'll stick closer than a brother. You speak to us. You say, draw near to you, and you draw near to us. You say that you'll manifest yourself to us as we continue to focus on you. Lord, this is just that there isn't a better deal. You make everything beautiful. There is nothing, Lord, that you're not able to turn for good. Lord, so knowing that no matter where we're at in our lives right now, you know. You know right where each and every one of us is at, Lord. You know exactly what we need. You designed us. You know how we're shaped, how we're made. You know what will speak directly to our hearts, Lord. So speak it now in a way that all of us will hear individually and know it's from you. And then lay down and do exactly what it is that you would have us do. What you would have us say, Lord. Because in doing that, we please you. And knowing, that, Lord, you are pleased with us. You look at us and you smile. You are well pleased with us, Lord. Amen. Hey, thanks for watching the video. 
be sure you hit the subscribe button so we can notify you when we come out with new content. Again, thanks for watching and hit the subscribe button now and then we'll see you next time.